Now, the next song is kind of a, a, a premiere of a brand new song um, that I wrote, not for the piano, because I don't know if you know, but the piano is a weak instrument. Because um, where's, where's my good friend Vincent Segal? Where's Vincent? Can we get Vincent up here? Ladies and gentlemen, Vincent Segal. Where is he? There he is. So, Vincent, uh, I met him in a studio in Paris in the 20 m and it was the day I was thinking about how weak the piano was, because I have this song, and I was trying to compose it and perform it for solo piano, uh, solo piano two, of course, and I just thought the piano was too weak, c'était trop faible, parce que, uh, en fait, un instrument comme, comme la voix humaine, ou un violoncelle, En fait, on peut jouer une note et ça, ça peut durer des minutes et des minutes et peut changer les vibrations et en fait, il, il peut s'exprimer vraiment quand il joue une note. Et moi, je ne peux pas. Quand moi, je tape une note, je ne peux rien faire après. I can't do anything with my... Like, uh, you know, I can't change what's happening. It's just... I just hit it and that's it. So one note of piano is worth nothing. It's the same if Glenn Gould hits this note. Or if this terrible lady who I gave a lesson to. <laughs> you know, it's, it's the same. If she hits that note, you know, it's the same as Glenn Gould. So, for one note, you're as good as Glenn Gould. <laughs> now, the trick comes when you start to add notes. And that's what a piano player does, is give the illusion, l'illusion d'expression. There's no real expression on a piano, so you have to fake it all, you know? And, and it makes piano players very jealous of even horn players. They can go like, or they, they feel it in their lungs and they're living the sound. And me, I'm just stuck with, you know? So I have to do things like tremolo, which is a way of making it sound like, okay, do, do a real tremolo on an E, just like an E. Hey, on an octave? Les deux octaves en même temps, c'est possible? See? Now, if I want to do that, I have to go like, yeah, very nice. I have to go like this. Sitting there like a stupid fool doing that, you know? Or, or you can bend a note, right? You can go, right? You can bend. Okay. And you can even go like this. You can even go, yeah. Or, or you can do like, uh, you can go like, right? You can, yeah, you know, this cheesy, jazzy, bluesy stuff, right? Okay, now, but if I want to do that, and sometimes I'm in a bit of a cheesy, jazzy mood, and I, even I want to play that, I have to pretend to do that by hitting the note under the note I really mean. He's actually flying around and expressing himself, and I have to go like this. So it's an illusion. I'm not really bending anything. And so the piano is fundamentally a weakling, you know? Eine, eine Winzling, right? I think that's what you say. Eine kleine schmutzige Winzling. <laughs> um, like a little dirty midget? Is that what I called the piano? Ah, uh, yeah, it wasn't very nice. Um, so I wrote this song, and I was frustrated. The piano wasn't good enough. And then I, I had the, uh, the chance, je croise Vincent in a studio, and uh, he was playing a song from Solo Piano One called Dot which, if we're lucky, he'll play for us later. Um, and I was very blown away. This guy's an incredible musician. And I thought, here it is. Here's a guy who actually has an instrument, and he can express himself. And he can take this melody that I'm so frustrated with this weak piano. And so I wrote my first song, really, for piano and cello, without ever intending to. And uh, my first piece of chamber music, you might say. Uh, and this is called Cello Moment, or Cello Moment or cello moment. So it's all those three. <laughs> 